So I've been trying to uh, just play around with Next.js a little bit more and try to understand how it kind of performs compared to just using like Create React app and whatnot. And what I have to kind of show you today, it's nothing too groundbreaking. You might already know this information, but I, I kind of built out three different approaches to the exact same page. And I don't know why this like cursor is stuck here on my page, if you can see this, but it's weird. Like my computer sucks. So if you go to the static endpoint, this is doing just a traditional static page with React. And when you load the page, it's going to just fetch data from an endpoint called users. And then it renders out those users here in cards. And the framework for CSS I'm using is Bootstrap. I want to get something that looks kind of realistic so we can actually like test the performance of this. And then we have another page. Let's see. So this one, I have a different route called SSG for server side generated. So this is the exact same page, except for that these user cards are generated uh, build time. So if I go to network and I look at the SSG page, you'll see that this response comes back with all the cards already there, right? So that's um, one of the main selling points for Next.js is that you have this ability to do server side generated pages. So they're really fast to load and they're really good for like your landing pages or your marketing pages, your about pages, your contact us. But for other pages that need really dynamic data, like you, you know, you can't really do server side generated or you can, but the results that are displayed have to be somehow like uh, updated on an interval. So every minute you might need to regenerate this page or every hour or every day. And then when you push change it to your GitHub branch, you can kind of regenerate this uh, server side generated page. But that's the second route. And then over here we have a third route SSR for server side rendered. And the main difference between this one is when you first make the request to the backend, the backend behind the scenes is going to fetch some data, render the page, and then send over the HTML in the full form. So if I look at this SSR page, it's basically the exact same thing as the, the static one over here on the left, like the, this um, SSG page. Has all the, you know, the user cards in here. But the main difference is this is generated uh, runtime, right? So the moment I make this request, the backend server is going to generate this and then send it back. Um, I'll show you some of the code if you want, but overall, like I was looking at the Lighthouse reports, um, the performance hit 99 for all these. So I don't know if this is like a good test or maybe there's just not enough DOM elements or not enough content on the page for this to even like verify anything. So for the static route, you know, it got a 99 performance and then the first content full paint is half a second. So I think this is like one of the, the key things you're looking for. This is like how quick can the user actually start seeing stuff when they make that request. So the lower this is, the better it is. And then time to interactive, I guess it's when the JavaScript is actually uh, parsed or whatever. And, you know, people can actually click on the buttons. I'm not really sure. I'm not really big, in, big into performance. Like the page loads fast for a user like I, I don't know how fast is too fast or not fast enough so I'm not really big into like squeezing on extra milliseconds out of my load times maybe big companies like Amazon might be but for a majority of the websites 99% like if the page loads and people can click buttons that's good enough so if you look at the lighthouse for this one uh, it, it's kind of the same I mean like time interactive was half a second which uh, I don't really know why that would be, I guess, because this is already generated or something. I don't know. Some, someone can explain to me this stuff. I'm not good in performance. I'll, I'll be honest with you. So the first contentful paint is kind of the same, like 0.4 seconds. So you compare it to the last one. It's kind of similar. I mean, the speed index is lower and the largest contentful paint is 0.9 versus 0.5. So this is just because there's probably more data on the page that comes over from the back end on the HTML. So yeah, this is gonna be a little bit larger. Um, and then the last one, if you look at the lighthouse here, I don't know what I just cl closed, but if you look at the lighthouse, first contentful paint is 0.3. So this is the fastest for the most part for some reason. Time to interactive is 0.7, speed index is seven, total blocking time is eight. Um, so overall, like, I don't know if this really shows the performance benefits. I think something that shows it better 
is I can just refresh the page and you can kind of judge for yourself. So the server side rendered, you'll notice that the spinner up at the top kind of runs for about a second and then the page shows. Okay, so not too bad. I mean, it works. Server side generated, this is kind of, you know, the fastest one. If you can make a page server side generated, this is going to be the most performant because you can cache it on a CDN um, and it's pretty quick. So let me click that refresh button and notice that the spinner lasted up here for like not that long. It's pretty quick. And then if I go to the traditional, this is like if you're using um, Create React App where you're doing like your page loads and then you fetch data to kind of display it later. Let's just refresh this one and see what happens. And notice that you get that traditional like flashing effect, right? Where the page had to go and fetch data from the back end before it could actually use the React map function to kind of our JavaScript map function to render out all of these cards. So again, I'll refresh the page. You can just, just see for yourself, like it's, you know, it's kind of weird and just flashes. And this is how a lot of pages actually work today is, you know, the data has to be fetched. Sometimes we'll show spinners in the front end to like sh indicate to the user that the data is being loaded. So, you know, wait around. Um, and that's about it. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm really showing you too much other than server side generating. Server side generated is by far the most performant. If you can get your page to be SSG, then strive for getting it to be SSG. So let's dive more into the React code and kind of explain how I did this. Um, and I, again, if you're a next expert, point stuff out to me. Um, I'm still trying to learn next and understand like what makes it better than other stuff. So I have three routes here, SSG, SSR, and static. And I've, I showed you that in the Chrome. So let's just look at uh, static. And this is a page that basically when it loads, it fetches the user data from the backend and it uses that in state and then passes that to a page. Page is the same component for all three of these routes. So if I look at page, it just has some bootstrap headers. It has uh, a hero banner, and then it kind of renders out all of those users in a three column grid system. So nothing too extravagant going on here in the page.jsx or the user.jsx. This is just a card, a bootstrap card that kind of displays the first name, last name, and a placeholder for uh, Ricky Bobby. So let's go ahead back. Um, and let's look at the API, API slash users. So this API, I did just kind of pretend that my API is slow. So I have a timeout of a second before it actually returns the users. And you can see that in the front end, like this is why that flash is happening. If I go to the network tab here and let you all see that. If I were to refresh this page and sorry, the, the font might be a little small. Let me kind of zoom in. You'll notice that this took about 1.01 seconds, right? The reason this took so long, you know, this is like a local host URL. The reason it took so long, again, was that set timeout I added here. Because I wanted to kind of simulate, you're actually hitting a real backend and there's some latency or delay. I wanted to kind of emulate that. But this just returns like a hard-coded list of 20 users. So there's nothing really too crazy going on here. And that user list is mocked out up here. So the static one, pretty straightforward. This is kind of what you see in a create react app where you have, you know, your different routes and those routes will on mount fetch some data if you needed. The difference between this one and server side generated is that server side generated routes and Next.js use this get static props function. So whenever you have this thing exported in your route file, react or next knows how to like take this and just uh, kind of generate a static page from this data. So this thing runs when you do a uh, npm build, which is technically next build, right? So npx next build, that's going to loop through all of your routes. It's going to find any of them that say get static props. It's going to run this code, and then it's going to kind of generate a bunch of static pages using the component here. So that's how that works, and that's why it's kind of fast behind the scenes because like now you have all of these pre pre generated HTML pages that you know, you can just host on a CDN and your web browser can just load the entire page with all the data already there. It doesn't have to do any extra fetching. Um, so this is the golden standard, basically. If you can achieve this for your web pages, do it. Sometimes you can't though. Sometimes you actually need to display serve, uh, data dynamically to the user. So that's why they also have server-side rendering, which is, if you worked with like PHP or Python, Django, this is kind of how all those API frameworks work, right? They have a route, you hit the route, it fetches data from the database, 
and then it kind of renders out a template and sends that back to the user. This is kind of the exact same approach with Next, although we're using React under the hood. So the way server-side rendering works is if you have this method, get server-side props, then Next knows that this thing needs to actually like run. It can't be like generated statically. So Next is actually sitting there waiting for requests. And when you make a request to this route, it's going to first call this function here, get server-side props, which is going to run your code. And in this case, I'm just fetching users from like a mock database, but you would probably fetch users from Mongo or you could fetch it from an external API if you wanted to. It kind of all depends. Um, but yeah, I think there's some trade-offs between like which approach you're taking. This one is going to kind of put the delay up front with the user with that spinner. As I showed here, like nothing's going to happen for like a good second and then the entire page will load versus this approach. Something will load, like the user will see something and then under the hood, it makes a request to the back end to get more data. So it's a trade-off and you have to kind of decide for yourself, what is the better approach for my application? Do I want to have it like statically fetch data when some of the React page loads or do I want the user to wait a full second? Now, the reason that you might want to use server-side rendering here is if you need a lot of search engine optimization, because if you have like a Google web crawler kind of hitting your routes, and for whatever reason, these cards are important to you and important for search engine optimization. You kind of want this stuff to be here when the web crawler hits your page versus if you kind of do this approach, again, remember, you're going to have this like one second delay of flashing and the web crawler may decide to just stop crawling your site after that X amount of time has passed and it might not get to this content. So just keep that in mind. Um, I can't tell you what the best approach to do is. It, it all depends, right? And that's the beauty of Next is that they give you the options to do whatever works best for each individual page. If one page needs more search engine optimization, then yeah, you should probably do server-side rendering or static site generating, static site generation. If one page has a ton of dynamic data, like maybe you have a table with like sortable columns and filters and all this other stuff, then maybe it makes sense to just do a traditional like static react component and have that data fetched as they're clicking buttons and whatnot so keep that in mind do the research for yourself figure out what figure out what works best for your application but i hope you guys uh learned something from this i didn't really learn too much i already knew server-side generation was going to be the fastest i was kind of disappointed that lighthouse didn't like really show much performance differences between these approaches maybe i'm just not doing it right so leave a comment if you have a suggestion how i could do this better uh, have a good day and happy coding